Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at looping. So far, our code has run uh, each of the instructions in sequence. So one instruction following the next. Yeah, which is really cool. But what if I want a way to be able to re repeat code over and over again? Well, for that, what we can actually use are looping instructions in our programs. So looping instructions are instructions that tell the computer to run a certain block of code once or, or, or more than once. Righto. Well, I think we could possibly implement looping into this little program that I've got here. Uh, basically, I want the user to tell us what their name is and, you know, I want to be able to tell them that they're awesome, repetitively. And <laughs> yeah. as you can see here, I've, I've, I've actually written out awesome. How many times are you printing out there? I think I've got One, a two, ten, three, four, five, maybe six, seven, eleven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Ten times. Yeah, yeah. so... Is that enough? Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe. Maybe I want to be told... <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, yeah, ten times at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so is there a way that we can implement some kind of looping uh, structure in this to, you know, sort of save on the overhead? Yeah, that's right. So rather than having this, this one instruction repeated 10 times ourselves, we can use a, a while loop to actually repeat that code for us. We only then need it once, but we do need a little bit of extra code to go around that. So what we've done here is declare a, a loop count integer variable. So this is somewhere where we can store a number. The reason we need that is because we have to be able to tell the loop when to stop. And so if we want it to do it a number of times, the way we could do that is keep a count of how many times we've done that and repeat, in this case, while that count is less than 10. Yeah. Uh, so we then assign before the loop, the loop count to the value zero. And while the loop count is less than 10, so zero is less than 10. Yes? It, well, yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, we then write out awesome. We add one to the loop count. So it would now be one. And we go back again. And it... At the end of the while loop here, it jumps back to the start and it reevaluates that condition. So loop count would now be one. One is, is still less than 10. Yeah. So it would print out awesome again. It would then add one to the loop count. So it would be two. Um, why do we need to keep adding one to loop count? Uh, well, if we didn't add one to loop count, it would always be zero. And zero would always be less than 10. So we would end up with an infinite loop. An infinitely awesome name. Uh, yeah. And it would never actually, <laughs> the program would never tell, finish telling us how awesome that name was. Yeah. Sweet. So, what actually happens when our loop count is, you know, not less than 10? Okay, so in this case, we're going to loop through. Once we get to loop count 10, so it was 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, we store 10 back in loop count. It goes back around and checks while loop count is less than 10, so 10 is not less than 10. And so it jumps over those instructions inside the loop and continues on from the next instruction. Okay, cool. And then the procedure So it'll print finishes. out the name. Yeah. So in this case, it would print out name is an, followed by 10 awesomes, and then name. Nice. Cool. Okay, now here's a new version where we pass across the number of times that we want the name repeated. So rather than having that as a fixed 10 times, here we're going to ask the user how many times they want it repeated, and we pass that in as a parameter. So Ruben, do you want to just quickly walk us through how this works? Yeah, sure. So as you can see in main, uh, we've got two variables that are declared. The first is called name. Okay, so that's that allocates space for us so that the user for a string, can, yep. Yep, yep. So the user can store their name. Yep. And our second variable is called count, and it's an integer. And we're going to store how many times the user wants to be told that their name's awesome within that variable. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we assign a value to name. So let's say the user's name is yeah. Fred, so we, for example. we execute this the read string function just as a reminder. The read string function asks the user what they want to. Oh, in this case, what is your name? They type something in. That string gets returned. We we can store that string inside the name. So what what are we going to have this time? Um, we can do Fred. Fred. I guess. Yeah, that's yep. nice and easy to type. And um, we're using read integer, okay, to assign the value to our variable count. So yep. we've got read integer there. We're asking the user how many times uh, they want to be told that their name is awesome. So what's a 56,421? 
I think that's a little well, bit excessive. I think we can. It would work though, yeah. It, it would definitely. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. cool. Oh, but, okay, well, <laughs> let's just start with three. <laughs> just, yeah, just for the sake of the. Yep, let's stick with three. Okay, so we've got our name, Fred. Yeah. Uh, so the number of three. Times. Three gets stored into count. It does. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then we've got our call to our procedure print awesome name. And you'll notice that we're passing that procedure two parameters. Name and count. Yeah. So name gets copied into name. Is that the same name variable in print awesome name as in main? That is not. No. Ah, cool. Okay. So the parameter has a unique name. Yeah. A new, unique variable. Yeah. Yeah. So inside this print awesome name, that name parameter is, is its own variable. And here we're just copying the value from mains variable into print awesome names variable yeah. and it's the same for count so times inside print awesome name is a separate variable and we copy the value of count into the variable times yeah but they only exist inside print awesome name yeah anyway sorry keep going no that, that's fine and as you'll notice uh, in print awesome name we've got a variable declaration called loop count and that is an integer and that only exists inside print awesome name as well yeah that's 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 correct yep um, and then we start the procedures block, okay? So we print out the name. Yeah, and the name is Fred. Uh, we assign the value of zero to yep. our variable loop count. So we put zero into the loop count variable. Yep. Yep. And then we get to our loop, okay? So the expression for the loop is while, or well. Yeah, while. Yeah, yeah loop good. count is less than times. And so, so what's loop count at the moment? Uh, zero. Zero. So is zero less than times? What's times? Times is three and zero is less than three. Yep. Okay, so we want to print out awesome to the terminal. Uh, and then we want to increment our loop count by one. So loop count is now one. one. Yep. yep. Uh, the, the loop finishes and we go back to the top and we reevaluate that expression. So, so is loop count less than times? So loop count is one. Yep. And times is three. So one is less than three. Yes. Most, most certainly. Okay. Yep. So we execute <laughs> those instructions again. We increment loop count by one. And yep. then. So loop count is now two. Yep. And we go back up to the top of our loop and we yep. evaluate that expression. So two yep. is less than three. Yep. We execute our loop once more. We increment loop count by one. So that is now three. Seems quite repetitive, this, it, doesn't it? Well, we get <laughs> repetition. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. So, so now we go back to our uh, our expression and um, loop count is three. Is three less than three? Uh, no. No, three is three. It is not less than three. Okay. So that is where. <laughs> yep. Cool. That's where our loop finishes. Yeah, right? and so we, so we skip over that, yeah. yeah. And we get to our final little printed message, which is just simply name. So in yeah, this right case, name. we've got Fred is an awesome, awesome, awesome name. Awesome three times. Yeah, cool. And then that's the end of print awesome name. So that procedure ends. When that procedure ends, notice that the variables associated with that procedure lose scope so all of they go out of memory basically we can think about them that way cool. they disappear we come back to main and the program ends well, let's just try it one more time so if we run this again uh, we'll do the same name so we'll do fred uh, but this time if i store zero as the count so i want zero as the count uh, we call print awesome name fred gets copied across and zero gets copied across into times we get our loop count variable uh, name is an or is an gets printed out. We assign zero to loop count. And then we do our first test while loop count is less than times. So, what's the value of your loop count? Zero. And times is also zero. And now, as you said before, you know zero is zero in this case. So zero is not less than zero. So it doesn't print awesome out at all. Mm. So we get left with Fred is an name. Not radically fantastic, but it's it'll do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's correct. So this is one feature of the while loop. So the while loop is what we call a pre-test loop. So it tests the condition before, pre, the actual body. And so in this case, we can run instructions zero or many times. So yeah. we've seen how it ran three times. It could have ran 56,000 times. It just would have taken Ruben a bit longer to explain. But <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how many times. It could be zero or more times, yeah. depending on, in this case, the value of the times variable. Now, there is one other kind of loop, and that loop is a post-test loop. So the post-test loop, rather than checking the condition before the body, checks the condition at the end. So here is an example of a post-test loop. Now, notice at the start, we have a marker for where the start of the loop is. We then have the list of instructions inside the loop, and we can loop, uh, in this case, until a condition is true, 
And this will run the body of the loop one or many times because it has to get through the conditions before it gets to the, oh sorry, through the body of the loop before it can get to the test. Uh, so that's the difference between the two different kinds of loops. Okay, here are some additional examples. Uh, this first example is a validation loop. So it makes certain that the number entered by a user is a positive number less than 10, so one through to nine. This second example uh, calculates the number of bits needed to represent a certain value. Uh, and the, the feature of this loop is that we're using a function inside the while there. So we're using the power function to calculate whether two raised to a certain exponent is less than the number. So we can find the, the exponent, what we need to raise the two to the power of to, to be able to store that value. Yeah, and this final example that we've got here is a simple game loop. And basically it just keeps repeating until it detects that the user has closed the window. Yeah, cool. Okay, and that's it for looping. So looping instructions allow us to easily repeat code. And the great thing is we can specify how many times to repeat it. So it could be uh, zero to many with a while loop, uh, or we could use the post-testing loops uh, to run one to many times. Next up, we've got um, input validation, as well as passing variables and custom data types, you know, records and enumerations. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed watching these videos and we look forward to seeing you soon. This has been a Spindone production.